Let's see, there we go, there's the volume. <laughs> yeah, good evening, great to worship with you tonight at St. Paul's. We are uh, continuing our summer series where we're looking at the gospel lessons uh, most of the time. Tonight we definitely are from the book of Luke, looking at teachings of Jesus. And here we, like Mary, get to sit at the feet of our Savior and, and hear some important teachings for us about prioritizing our lives around him and around his word. Our first hymn today is Thy Strong Word. It is hymn 630 inside of the hymnal. The words will be on the screen. Sometime during the service, if you could fill out one of the connection cards, there are pens inside the side aisles, and you can put that in the offering place. God's blessings as we worship together.
If you're able, I would invite you to please rise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We have come into the presence of God, who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. Brothers and sisters in Christ, God has amazing news for us. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all of your sins. By the perfect life and the innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he's removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. Now may God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. God, you have prepared joys beyond understanding for those who love you. Pour into our hearts such love for you, that loving you above all things, we may attain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. In our first scripture lesson from Genesis chapter 18, we see Abraham providing great hospitality and listening to the word of God. We'll see that happen in our gospel lesson as well, as we see God make his promises to Abraham. Genesis chapter 18, the Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed down low to the ground. He said, If I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not let your servant pass by. Let a little water be brought, and then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat, so that you can be refreshed, and then go on your way, now that you have come to your servant. Very well, they answered, do as you say. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three seahs of fine flour and knead it and bake some bread. Then he ran to the herd and selected a choice tender calf and gave it to a servant who hurried to prepare it. Then he brought some curds and milk and the calf that had been prepared and set these before the men. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Where is your wife, Sarah? they asked him. There, in the tent, he said. Then the Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year. And Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already old and well advanced in years. And Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, Am I worn out and my master is old? Will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, 
Why did Sarah laugh and say, will I really have a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. This is God's word. We continue with Psalm 119b. It's the, the music is printed on page 5 in the worship folder. We'll sing that together. The way that our Lord chooses to work is through his word and his sacraments, which give us everlasting life. We see an example of that in Colossians chapter 1, our next scripture reading too, where over and over you see how it is the gospel, it's the good news of Jesus that is changing the world and creating faith, hope, and peace. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother. To the holy and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae, grace and peace to you from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love you have for all the saints. The faith and love that spring up from the hope that is stored up for you in heaven and that you have already heard about in the word of truth, the gospel. That has come to you. All over the world, this gospel is bearing fruit and growing, just as it has been doing among you from the time for, since the day you heard it and understood God's grace in all its truth. You learned it from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf, and who also told us of your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. We pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the knowledge of God. And being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you might have great endurance and patience and joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves. 
in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This is God's word. Alleluia. My word will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Alleluia. rise for the words and works of Jesus recorded in our gospel lesson. The gospel is recorded in Luke chapter 10, beginning with verse 38. This will also be our sermon focus for today. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated. We'll continue to the sermon hymn, hymn 632. Lord, open now my heart to hear. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Staff meeting. Check. Review the worship folder with the secretary. Check. Schedule visits to the shut-in list. Check. 
visit the nursing home, check, find out that there's someone who's actually at the hospital, go visit the hospital, check, check, realize they're at a hospital in a different city, check, prepare for board meetings and other team meetings, check, check, attend board meetings and team meetings, check, study the sermon, read the commentaries, uh, start to outline the text, check. Pre-marriage class number one, prepare for that, check. Pre-marriage <coughs> class number two, prepare for that, check. Attend both pre-marriage <laughs> classes with both couples on different days, check, check. Um, outline the sermon, finish that, check. Write the sermon, check. Memorize the sermon, <laughs> check. <laughs> Send out emails to find more preachers for next month, uh, check. Uh, Long-range plan planning for worship study and Bible study and campus Ministry, um, reaching out with texts to college students. I, I can't say check for those. They didn't get accomplished this week. But uh, that's, that's just a, a little glimpse of what a typical week, what this week looked like in my life. And it's probably similar for a lot of you, but, but different, different tasks, different things that are going on in your life. If you go into my office at any given time, I'm, I'm a checklist maker. So you'll see post-it notes and you'll see strips of paper and things crossed out. I like to be able to physically cross them out when I accomplish them. You'll probably on most days see a lot of things that aren't crossed out. Other stuff came up. Um, sometimes that can be really frustrating, having a, a lot of important things to do. And sometimes if you're anything like me, you might have a lot of things to do and find that you spend a lot of your time on things that uh, actually in the grand scheme of things don't matter all that much. Maybe it's because we don't want to jump into the, the, the more challenging things, the, the higher priority things. Maybe you can be a little bit of a procrastinator sometimes. And it's, it's, good, it's good to just take breaks and to do other tasks to kind of build up energy again. Um, big fan of 15-minute naps in the middle of the day or a short walk to kind of get energized again. But maybe you like me, like Martha, can sometimes look at the to-do list, the task list, the things that need to get done, and just get worried, upset, and distracted by many things. When today God, God reminds us that there is one thing. There is one person that we need. There is one on our priority list. And we get to sit with him today in his word, in Luke chapter 10. Verse 38 starts out by saying, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. So, so were they walking through the town of Bethany, through the marketplace, when, when all of a sudden Martha saw them and recognized them and said, Jesus! You have to stay with me. It doesn't really say if Jesus prearranged this or if it was spontaneous, but it seems a little bit spontaneous because now they're coming over to her house and you can just picture her getting ready. It says Jesus and his disciples were, were there. Did she invite them all over? Probably. And she's getting ready. And you can just imagine the to-do lists that she's writing, that she's thinking about. We've got to make sure that all the, the rooms are clean, that we've got out the good china. Probably not china. But get, get out the plates. Get out the food. Make sure that, that we, can, we can make a nice meal because we're serving Jesus. And she's got at least one other person we know who can help her. Her sister seems like her younger sister, Mary. And you can just sit there having the pep talk. All right. It's Jesus and his disciples. It's go time. Let's do this. You know what you have? I know what I have? All right, break. And then they go, and Martha goes, and she starts getting ready, and she starts preparing the meal. And, and then she goes back into the kitchen, and, and she realizes that the oven isn't even turned on yet. It's not even preheating. Uh, there, there's, there's, no, there's no dishes out on the table. It's, it's not ready. The floor hasn't been swept yet. She had all these things she was supposed to do. Where is Mary, <laughs> doesn't she know what the priorities are right now? Everything has to be perfect. Jesus is here. And then she rounds the corner and she finds her sister, Mary, and there she is sitting at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. 
just sitting there. Can, can, can you believe what she's doing? Just, just sitting there. Martha is just fuming. She's so upset. There are so many things to do. And here her sister Mary is just, just sitting there and listening and probably bothering Jesus, acting like she's one of his disciples, a guest of Jesus. Doesn't she realize that Jesus is their guest today? So she, she goes to the top authority and she goes straight to Jesus. Maybe she's been trying to get Mary's attention already and she's just in the zone and she taps Jesus on the shoulder and says, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. She's got to listen to Jesus even if she won't listen to me. And then Jesus pauses from teaching Mary and from teaching the disciples and starts to teach Martha gently, lovingly. Martha. Martha. The Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. Ah. Martha, it's not Mary who has the problem today. It's not Mary who has the wrong priorities. She's not distracted or being a distraction. Instead, Martha, my dear child, Martha, today you're the distracted one. <laughs> you're the one with the wrong priorities. There's only one thing that you need to be concerned about today because I'm here, because Jesus is here today. So, so have a seat. Everything else can wait. What was the one thing needful? There's, there's one thing that is needful, and, and Mary has chosen that. It's spending time with Jesus, listening to his word. Earlier, I gave you a snapshot of my to-do list for the week, and you may have noticed something missing from that weekly to-do list. I didn't even mention weekend worship. <laughs> Gathering around a God and his word and his sacraments. And that's, that's one of the highlights of my week and the highlight of the week for, for all Christians. We get to gather around Jesus and his word. And when I'm here uh, doing and teaching, I'm, I'm also worshiping and being refreshed from these readings from God's word and having got to study those too. And then I just have this um, unique among many pastors, blessing of being at a church where there's other preachers too, so I can sit in the pew and hear other people have thought through God's word and helped to apply it to my life. And what a refreshing thing that is to just gather and hear what Jesus has to say for us. Sitting at the feet of Jesus and being recharged. Gathering around God's word and sacraments is the beating heart of the Christian life. But it's not, it's not just gathering on a Saturday night or a Sunday morning, is it? Sitting at the feet of Jesus in his word is also another thing that I neglected to mention on my to-do list. And that's opening his word personally and letting that word speak to you and recharge you and praying it back to him. And, and sadly, as I was writing this sermon and thinking about these things, I realized in all the busyness of having a sermon to preach to God's people, I didn't schedule this on my to-do list this week. I didn't put it on my Google Calendar. I didn't write it on a checkbox on, on a Google Doc or something like that. Just sit and read God's Word. Uh, I'm working through the, the Bible in a year and have chapters, but I just I didn't really get to them this week. And, and this text just reminded me of, not Pastor Marcus, you have to do that, but oh, I think I'm missing out. <laughs> Maybe there's a reason that we sometimes end up feeling worried and distracted and upset about many things. And it's because we've let those things be the focus of our life instead of the peace that comes from knowing Jesus in, in his word. I believe there's a there's a quote from Martin Luther that says, I have so many things on my list to do today that I'm going to have to pray for three hours today. <laughs> First, just being in, in devotion with God 
and his word, the one thing that we really need, and everything else can wait. Perhaps you've been there too. We can all make all kinds of unprioritized or misprioritized to-do lists. We can fill our lives with things that are really not very important, all while missing the most important things in our day-to-day and our week-to-week lives. A symptom of that is evident in Martha. She's worried and upset. She's running around and she's distracted. What gets the priority place on your calendar? Maybe for some, it's, it's the children's event schedule that just kind of rules the calendar. Maybe it's work and always being on call for work, thinking about work while neglecting other things. Um, money and bills get the most attention fooling ourselves into thinking that that's the most important thing and sacrificing so much for just a little bit more. Maybe in the past you've been like Martha too, uh, skipping the worship service so that you can make the all-important meal for the family that's going to come over and make sure that that's a great experience. We just naturally take good things that God gives us and put them into a higher priority position than they should be. The theologian John Calvin said that that the human heart is an idol factory. (laughs) That's a natural thing for a sinner to do. But wait a second, Pastor, you might be thinking, didn't you see what Martha was doing? Maybe even, wait a second, Jesus, didn't you catch what Martha was doing? Martha was serving Jesus. She was literally serving Jesus. And he tells her she's got her priorities wrong. So so what what is wrong with that? What is wrong with serving like she was? Well, nothing in and of itself, right? She she is serving in a way that is good and godly, yet Jesus tells her at this point in time, right now, having who she has in her home with her, she's got her priorities a little bit out of whack. We can convince ourselves that that doing things for Jesus is more important than learning from and receiving from Jesus. That the most important part is how we respond instead of being filled up by Christ. And that's a dangerous thing Jesus doesn't want us to miss either. It's about priorities. And when we are first filled up with his grace and his word, then something natural and beautiful happens. We go out and serve him. But it's not the other way around. It's not our service that that then leads to more grace from Jesus. We might end up thinking kind of like Martha, Lord, don't you, don't you care about all this time-sensitive work, important work that I have going on? So, some of it is even in your name, and it's connected with serving you. And we see that Jesus does care about her. And he does care about that. He cares enough to say to her, as, as, as she's so focused in that moment to take care of Jesus, she, he just says, take a break. Right now, let me serve you before you serve me, Martha. It looks like you're running on empty again. It's time to pause. It's time to take a break and just come and get filled up with my joy and my peace and my patience and my forgiveness. This is the very same Jesus who says to all of his disciples, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, And you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. This is the same Jesus who says, For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. For us, for for, for good, solid Christians who can get uh, really worked up and and focused even on, on serving and doing and accomplishing This is Jesus who says, I've done all of the work for you. I have stood in your place with a perfect life, and because of that, the Heavenly Father looks at you and says, in you I am well pleased. I love you for who you are in Christ, not not for what you're doing for me. It takes all the pressure off in our service to Jesus and lets us come and just get rejuvenated 
by him on a week-to-week, day-to-day basis. We see Jesus doing all of the work of salvation for himself, showing the ultimate hospitality. Not, not Martha inviting him into her home, but Jesus inviting you into his home, his heavenly home where he promised his disciples and he promises you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you, a room, a mansion that is yours in the Father's house. He's going there to prepare a banquet of of rich foods, the finest of meats, the best of wines, all these pictures of just a glorious party, of being with Christ and being with God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit forever in heaven. He not only, at, at that time, he washed his disciples' feet as they came and enjoyed that Passover meal with him, but he's washed each of us in the waters of baptism and make us, made us fit to be with him forever. Now, the best service that we can give to Jesus, a little counterintuitive maybe, the best service that we can give is to let him serve us with his word. Gathering regularly at the feet of Jesus where he promises to be found in his word and in his sacraments, the baptism and the Lord's Supper. We can, and we do, come up with lots of good opportunities, programs, events, and ministries to do together as a congregation. But if we're not gathering for worship, to hear his word together, we've missed the point. (laughs) We We can send our kids to incredible Lutheran schools and support Christian higher education, but if we're not talking about Jesus and opening the Bible or a devotion book in our home, then... We've missed the point again. We've missed out. In our congregation, probably one of the things at the leadership level that we struggle with the most are are setting priorities. What what are we going to focus on with our limited amount of time that we have? What are we going to direct our our limited amount of offerings to be able to to do the most we can with in the kingdom of God? We're we're a big Wells church in town, and we want to be able to say yes to everything. We want to be able to, to just um, do everything that we can ministry-wise. And, and sometimes when we get into that mindset, then we get upset when we can't provide everything at the, the right time or in the right kind of a, a format. So these are things that we can gather around God's Word about and pray about. And maybe if I can direct some of your prayers, I'd ask you to pray that we can work on doing the most important things at St. Paul's for our spiritual health. Pray that we can find clarity on on what programs and ministries are going to be the best for the spiritual health of the congregation so that we can prioritize those. Pray, continue to pray that another pastor joins us here soon to be another doctor of souls, just one-on-one, individually, be be able to provide that personalized grace from God's word that our congregation, that every single person needs so deeply, one soul at a time. It's easy to get worried and upset about many things instead of focusing on the priorities and the mission that Jesus gives us essentially to grow in his word and to go out with his word. So as a congregation, as a leadership team, I think our first focus is just encourage and invite people to be with us in God's house, Saturday nights, Sunday mornings, gathered around his word. Everything flows from spiritual care and getting the word and sacraments into people's hearts. It's the gospel that does this work. Martha could end up getting kind of a bad reputation from this section, and hopefully I haven't given her um, too, too bad of a rap here. I don't think she should. Jesus loved her enough to redirect her, even when her priorities were off. He helped her reprioritize her life. And you know what? I think it worked. We we don't see what happened next. Did Martha Martha just put put down whatever she was holding on? Did she sit down too? Did she just pause everything? Did she let the chicken burn and, and just sit with Jesus? We don't know exactly what she did, but we know at some time she must have. Because when she needed it most, when she needed most to know who Jesus was and what he had done, her faith was there. It was strong and it was informed by Jesus. 
Because it wouldn't be long until Martha would see Jesus again under very different circumstances. This time, not, not, not just a passing traveler, house guest, but this time there for a funeral of her brother. And she would approach Jesus and say, Lord, if you'd been here, if you'd been here earlier, my brother wouldn't have died. But I know now that God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? What's her answer? Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God who is to come into the world. <laughs> faith comes by hearing. Faith is strengthened by hearing. When she needed Jesus the most, she understood who he was and what he'd done. Jesus helps us, and Jesus help us, to recognize the distractions for what they are so we can prioritize your word, which prepares us for life and for death. Amen. Please rise. We confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, do we have the Wells Connection? Ready to roll? Okay, we'll have the Wells Connection, see an update from things going on in our, in our synod, and we'll also pass out the offering plates during that time. Again, you can place the connection card into the plate when it comes by or into the basket on your way out. Hello, I'm Wells President Mark Schrader. We've all heard the media reports about recent college graduates settled with enormous debt. It's true that the cost of delivering a quality education is increasing, but it's also true that Martin Luther College has a laser-like focus on affordability. Here's a common scenario. A young person is considering a career in full-time ministry, but they're not quite sure. They'd like to try Martin Luther College to test the waters, but they fear running up debt from tuition and fees. To alleviate that concern, in partnership with incoming students and their families, MLC has set a goal that no student will need to take on loans for that first year of college. It's so important that young people who are willing to consider ministry are not discouraged from pursuing that goal because studying at MLC is too costly for them. Don't forget that the public ministry is a way to make an eternal difference in the lives of people every day. We're talking about things that will make a difference forever. Uh, and that, to keep that in front of them too, so they don't just get paralyzed thinking about dollars and cents. The plan is part of a larger effort at MLC to create an appealing, yet affordable, campus experience that will attract the next generation of young people considering full-time ministry. Right now, I'm planning on MLC um, as a teacher track. I would really like to teach music or maybe elementary. I haven't decided exactly, but that'd be really awesome. I wanted to be a teacher. Like, there was, that was like the only thing I wanted to do, was I wanted to teach little kids about God's Word and help them get where I am now. Taking on some college debt isn't necessarily a bad thing for a college student. The key is to keep it manageable. 
That's why MLC is focused on ensuring the total debt of its students stays below a level that's 50% of the average starting salary of a Wells teacher. It's a reachable goal if we all share in the effort. Parents, students, and members and congregations. I do not think we can overestimate the importance of this place. If we want the gospel to live on, not only for us, but our children and our grandchildren, and for those surrounding us in our communities and world, Another key part of the effort is financial education for the students themselves. Nearly all MLC students now receive a financial wellness training to learn about budgeting and balance sheets, to prepare for their personal lives and their roles as church leaders. That's a huge asset to be able to have a program that talks about these things, um, breaks it down into simple steps, and makes it approachable. Why wouldn't you want your kid to have that kind of experience as well? Nearly every college and university faces financial challenges, but Martin Luther College is dedicated to minimizing the debt of our students so they can focus on lives of service for your congregation and the world. One of the ways that our church body is helping Martin Luther College provide tuition assistance funds is through the Wells Martin Luther College Endowment, which distributes over $125,000 per year. To learn more about offering gifts for tuition assistance at MLC, contact mcg at wells.net. Please rise as we make our prayer one. We'll use the responsive prayer of the church. It'll be on the screen and on page nine in the worship folder. Lord God, our maker and preserver, we praise and thank you for all that you give us day after day. We are not worthy of all the mercies you show us. You have given us your precious word to nourish our souls and to protect us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. We thank you. Heavenly Father, we pray that you shield us from every kind of danger, sudden catastrophe, terrors of crime, and the pain of disease. Watch over those who travel by land, sea, and air. Keep our loved ones from whatever perils may threaten them. Heal those who are sick, cheer those who are sad, calm those who are distressed, and comfort all who are old and infirm. Bless our land, our people and those who hold offices of high trust. Keep our government and schools upright and strong for the advancement of good citizenship and useful vocations, that we may enjoy your gifts of peace, security, and well-being. Grant your blessings to every nation on earth, where there are wars, may there be peace, where there is hatred, let it be healed, where there is poverty, danger, or disaster, And hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. We bring these requests before you in the name of Jesus, our Lord, and ask you to hear us. Take all that we have, our bodies and minds, our time and skills, our ministries and offerings, and use them to your glory. We give ourselves to you that we may serve you in whatever way is pleasing in your sight. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts, that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. seated for our closing hymn, Savior, again, to thy dear name we raise.
faithful hymn. Thanks for worshiping together tonight. God be with you the rest of this week. There are, there are always a lot, of, um, a lot of things going on at St. Paul's, so read through the news and notes. Um, this next week, I will be, I'll be out again. I kept thinking, like, oh, I haven't seen people in so long, and I realized, oh, it's because I've been gone, <laughs> not because you guys have been gone. Um, so I won't be here next week. My father has his 40th anniversary in the ministry, and I'm going to be preaching for that. It's also my mom and dad's 40th wedding anniversary, so spending the weekend in Kickwick, Minnesota for that over by Winona. Um, yeah, and then some other stuff that is coming up. There's a couple things going on on Tuesday. They're both mentioned in here. One is uh, another classroom to help with cleaning on Tuesday evening. There's information about how to sign up and come help with cleaning on that. I know Mr. Flieger would, would love the help for his classroom. That's been going on quite a bit, so if you ever need to know, give the church office a call and see how you can help out with those things. Also on Tuesday night at 5.30, we're going to be able to have a call meeting, kind of pick the closest one that we could for a lead pastor call again. So that's Tuesday night at 5.30. We'll meet in the fireside room just down those steps. So come and join us for that. Also, very exciting news. We had extended a call to Nancy Johnson from... She lives in, in New Ulm here. And to be the, the final piece of the puzzle for called workers at Jesus Loves Me Learning Center. And she has just let us know that she's accepted that call. Here's the letter she wrote to us. Uh, Dear members of St. Paul's Lutheran Church, with much honor and joy, I'm writing to tell you I have accepted your call to be the lead toddler teacher at Jesus Loves Me Learning Center in North Mankato. I am excited to be a part of the ministry at Jesus Loves Me. What an amazing thing to be able to share the love of Jesus with all those little hearts on a daily basis. I ask that you continue to keep my family and I in your prayers as we make this transition and I begin my service at JLMLC. I look forward to working together with the staff at JLM and St. Paul's Church to bring the good news of Jesus to everyone. Blessings, Nancy Johnson. So... That means that we are, as far as called staff goes, all staffed up at Jesus Loves Me Learning Center with, with, with permanent positions, not just one-year positions. So really excited about that. Um, and if I could ask you guys to just maybe wave your hands. You've been here a couple weeks already. This is my first time seeing you at a, at a, at a Saturday night service. The Waltz are here now, too. Um, John and Donna Walt. Um, John is our new principal at Risen Savior Lutheran, and Donna is one of the teachers that Jesus Loves Me Too, so another really just good connection between those. Really, really glad to be here together. Uh, those are the announcements that I see. Soccer Camp Sunday is coming up in a couple weeks, so our 1030 service on the 31st of whatever month this is, July. Um, <laughs> is going to be an outdoor service, and we'll hopefully have a lot of guests with us that day, so come and meet the other families there. There'll be a meal and soccer going on. If you could help with anything for soccer camp, let me know. It's in the evenings from 5.30 to 7.30, last full week of July. Um, I think that's all I've got. God be with you. I look forward to seeing you on your way out. Say hi to the people you worshiped with today.